everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you've watched my last Japan vlog that I put up which would have been a week in Tokyo you'll realize that this is me starting this vlog at the point where I finished the last vlog. Tomorrow we're going to be going on a day trip to Hakone. Now if you guys have been following me for a long time if you've read my book A Year in Tokyo which is my little illustrated memoir and Tokyo guide that I put out I speak quite a bit about Hakone and this little area that's just south of Mount Fuji. I went on a trip here back when I lived in Japan in 2018. This trip was like really life-changing for me. I loved Hakone. I went here because I was being paid by a magazine to write an article about Hakone and at the time when we lived in Japan we had very little money and so we never did day trips or anything like that and so for me just getting this like two-day period away where I got to go to a fancy little hotel, go to an onsen, like go to all these like cafes and stuff, go to a museum. It was just such a lovely little time and it meant so much to me and the fact that I got paid to go there and write a travel article on it was really significant. We wanted to go back to Hakone in 2019, the last time we went to Japan and we couldn't actually do it because a typhoon hit right before we went on holiday so all of the train lines got ripped up. I think technically like four-ish years since I've been back to Hakone so I'm really excited that we're going to be going tomorrow. This time of course Tyler is going to be with me which is going to be wonderful as well. We're going to be getting up really early because Hakone is quite a way away. just in the shower we're just about to go I'm gonna eat breakfast this is one of my favorite things in Japanese this is like something that I find stupidly funny this is tuna onigiri I generally don't like canned tuna very much but there weren't very many um, options at this convenience store that we went to the word in Japanese for tuna is sea chicken <laughs> so like chicken of the sea And on the inside of the rice, we have this little bit, which is tuna. It's actually pretty good. Like, it's not that bad. As I said, normally I don't like canned tuna, but this is fun. <laughs> I just taped up my arm because we're hoping to go to a onsen today. Generally, you're not allowed to have tattoos in onsen, and so we got this bandage tape. Normally, I'll use band-aids, but it's just... It, it's quite inconvenient and they're not quite the right size so we got some bandage tape and I put a little bit of tape on my arm to cover up my tattoo but that's just a heads up for anyone coming to Japan if you want to go to an onsen and you have tattoos it can be a little bit tricky so yeah we're gonna finish packing up everything and then we're gonna head off to Hakone
So the very first place on our list for this trip was this little tea house called Amazake Chaya. So Hakone is situated along the old Takedo Road, which is between Kyoto and Edo. Back in, I believe it was 1868, Edo changed its name to Tokyo. So this was the road between Kyoto and Tokyo. And travelers used to routinely go along this road. And along the way, they would stop at these little chaya or tea houses for refreshments and to rest. And so Amazake Chaya is kind of a recreation of one of those old tea houses. The whole building smells like old wood, the floor is dirt, it's this beautiful little space in the mountains. It's so like calm and serene and they serve traditional mochi and I just love this place to bits so I definitely recommend you guys check it out if you're ever in Hakone or around this area. So we are just leaving Amazaka Chaya. We're currently on a little walking trail. It's not the most paved walking trail, it's a bit sloshy, there's a lot of tree roots. So it's a very fun walking trail, but not the type you'd want to go on if it's raining. Fingers crossed it doesn't start raining as we're walking. Amazaki Chaya was lovely. I'm so glad we went back. We had the Chikara Mochi again. Last time it came in like a plate of three, this time it was a plate of two. We had the Uguisu and Isobe, I think. We're making really good time so far because we have a very packed day and the ropeway that we want to go to at the end of the day actually closes at like 4.30. So we have to make sure that we do everything before then. We're just taking this little trail, which we decided to take because the buses are every half hour and we just missed the last one. I'm going to check back in with you guys later. I'm going to stop puffing and talking right now. Let's go head down to the lake and we can go see, oh my God, it's slippery. <laughs> Step on the rocks and not in the mud. There are bears in here? There's... <laughs> oh, no. so if you encounter one, <laughs> calm down, don't run away. We made it out of the main bit of the forest. Haven't slipped yet. Fingers crossed we don't now because we're still walking on these like big slippery cobbles. And also haven't gotten eaten by a bear yet, even though there are actually bears in that forest. Turns out it was a nice little hike through the forest, but I wouldn't recommend it if you are not a confident hiker, if you have slippery shoes or if it's raining or if it's bear season. I don't know. Saved it. <laughs> So this was gonna happen whether or not I was vlogging. To be clear, I'm an extremely clumsy person and I think I slipped like four more times after I stopped vlogging. Also, regarding the bear attacks, we were joking. Like we, we were not in any danger at any point. We went in early winter slash late autumn and so I'm pretty sure the bears were sleeping. Although I will say, if you're going to be taking this little hiking trail, the old Takato Road, please do Google that hiking path before you go. If you're planning on going, um, please don't get eaten by a bear because of me. <laughs> It's very quiet here today. Last time I went, I'm pretty sure it was a Friday, but it was absolutely packed with people. Hopefully this means we can actually take a photo with the shrine, because the Hakone Jinja Shrine, normally if you go on a weekend, there's a really, really long wait for it. So maybe if we're lucky, because it's not very busy today, we might actually be able to take a photo at the shrine.
Now, after we got off the pirate ship, which is actually called the Hokone Sightseeing Cruise, we ended up going up the mountain to Oakudani. Oakudani is really cool because it is this valley of volcanoes and there's real sulfur coming out of the earth and sort of like smothering the air. It does smell very strong, sort of sharp, like acrid egg smell. The area is really famous for cooking volcano eggs. And so they, they put the, the eggs in like the sulfur and it turns them black. And so there's all this like themed food up there. There were also heaps of school groups. Like we were just these tourists surrounded by so many school kids. I don't know if it was multiple schools, but there were so many children on excursions. Anyway, we went up the ropeway and headed off to Awakadani. <laughs> this is a beautiful view. It also smells very, very sulfuric. So like the egg smell. We are now making our way down the mountain to the Hakone Art Museum. We're just trying to manage time, which is why I'm running down a mountain. There's like mist everywhere. My camera's about to run out of battery, which is not good. It's been a long time since I've used this vlogging camera long enough for it to actually run out of battery on me, but just as magical as it was last time.
Hakone is famous for being an onsen town. Now, if you don't know what an onsen is, it's basically like a public bath. You can get private onsens, but they're a little bit more rare. And the bath water comes from hot springs. So essentially the bath is being heated by a volcano underneath the earth. The thing that makes an onsen really special and the reason why I like them so much is because when you get into the water, there's this kind of magnetic quality. Like it feels kind of like textured and it's just the most relaxing thing in the entire world. Like you come out of an onsen and you feel like a new person. Like it's just, it's like your skin is so soft and it's just so relaxing and lovely. And I really particularly love going to onsen that are outside when it's cold because like the contrast between the hot water and the cold air is just so wonderful and peaceful. This is what the onsen looks like in unison. There's a little section outside. Essentially what you do is go into the onsen, you wash and bathe beforehand because you're supposed to be clean when you get into the water. I like took off all of my makeup aside from my eye makeup because I just couldn't be bothered dealing with that. I was going to smudge a whole bunch of stuff. And then you go into the public bathing bit. It is gender segregated, but it's a little bit nervy the first time you do it. I'm not going to lie. It's a bit uncomfortable, but going and sitting in the volcano water outside is absolutely worth it. But I was sort of like sitting outside in the water and I could see all of the mountains and like the mist surrounding the mountains and the air was very cold and I was very like relaxed. And it can be a little bit tricky if you're self-conscious or if you have a lot of tattoos, you can book private onsen. I know that Unison has one available, but I think you need to book it in advance. It's a little bit more expensive. So there is an option for you there if you don't want to have the public gender segregated situation, but otherwise I love onsen. I think they're so wonderful and I definitely recommend you give it a go if you can. so happy to be wearing a mask right now. I feel very, very relaxed. My face is very red. I'm now gonna go wait for Tyler and then we're probably gonna head home. But that was lovely. So relaxing, so calming. And then we're going to take a very long train back to Tokyo. Uh, and then we're off to Osaka tomorrow. Just so magical. Look at those clouds. I love them. I love them so much. Okay, enough dawdling. Let's go find Tyler. You open the sky, I'll carry you home. Home to the mountain leaf. And soon, my friend, you'll see the looking. Won't you left behind? The ones you left behind. And I'll sing for you. room. I'm speaking very quietly again because again this hotel. I just wanted to pop in here and say thank you very much for watching this vlog. I had a lovely day. I like felt very sleepy on the train ride home because um like I came out of the onsen feeling very relaxed and, and just very like calm and happy with the world and then we took a bus from Unison which is the onsen place to Odawara station that we took the Shinkansen back here to Tokyo. So we got some ice cream. We're now gonna watch Spy Family and I'm gonna have a really big sleep now because we were out for like 14 hours. I have like 33,000 steps recorded today. I'm very tired. So I will say goodbye to you guys here. Thank you so very much for watching this video and also an enormous thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting my channel um, and all of the things that I make. Take care everyone and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. She can't recall my name No, she can't